Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to beautiful Soviet Eastern Europe. I'm back for some family matters, but sadly I don't have time to make a full video, but that gives me the opportunity to follow up on a promise that I made, and I'm going to make a tutorial on basic layers. That can be in Photoshop, it can be in Sketchbook, and also Procreate. So, let's jump into it. So, as I mentioned, here we are in Photoshop, and let me create a new layer straight ahead. There we go. So, how I like to explain layers is you have to imagine them as the old... Uh, films from uh, from the cartoons where you have a, a, a backdrop like a backplate that is actually really nicely painted so you can imagine like all sorts of nice trees and the scenery and then some mountains in the background and maybe even a little uh, sunshine going on there and maybe a little river and then on top of this you have the see-through layer like sort of like a film layer where you can draw for example, Mickey Mouse. Now, please, I'm drawing a very ugly Mickey Mouse. I'm not good at drawing Mickey Mouse, but let's say any sort of character you can draw here onto. So you have the static background and then you have this Mickey Mouse on the top that you can move around quite a bit here. And not just moving, but like you can exchange the layers. So you have another layer with Mickey Mouse moving a little bit and then another layer with Mickey Mouse moving a little bit more. All right, so let me, let me give you an example when I'm drawing here. So. Let me create three layers and I'm also going to name these layers. You can name these layers just to make it easier. So the top one is going to be the lines layer. The middle one is going to be color. And then on the bottom, we're going to have shadows. And then I'm going to start drawing on the top one here. And then let me speed this up for you a little bit. So as you can see, the lines layer is on the top layer and with this little eye icon, I can make it visible or invisible and I'm only affecting this one layer. Now next, I'm going to uh, do coloring on the second layer, basically the middle layer, which is called the color layer. For this, I'm going to choose sort of like a nice orange and I'm also going to take an airbrush and I'm just going to airbrush in very loosely. As you can see, I'm not airbrushing over the lines. So this, this is the strength of the layers that I'm just working under the lines and everything is see-through that I didn't paint in with black on the, on the top layer. So I can, if I say, oh, okay, I, I like this orange, but I want to go a little bit more red, I can just go a little bit more red. And then after that, I just nicely take a, an eraser, a hard eraser, and I just erase everything that is around the box, so I only want the color to be inside of the box. And then as you can see, lines on the top, colors below. So if I take away the black of the top, only the color is visible. If I want to adjust anything on the color layer, like moving it around, it's not going to affect the top layer. So this is really the power of layers. It is really simple once you grasp it and you just can't work without them. Obviously you can work without them, but it's just not going to be fun. And then uh, in the end, let me go down to the bottom layer. And before I do that, let me quickly erase these extra lines that are not needed. And then I go back to the nice uh, airbrush. I choose a dark color and I'm going to just brush in a little bit of that uh, shadow, just like that. And then after I'm done with my shadow, I can also start and erase it. For this, I'm going to choose sort of, well, I wanted to go for a soft brush, but I decided to go instead for a sort of a harder brush just to make it a little bit more interesting. So let me erase this. And there we go. This is the shadow. And as you can see, just as before as well, I can move this shadow, take it away. Uh, I can interact with each and every layer separately. So this is the basics of, of the layers. Now, another extra thing that I find to be of value is locking the layers. In this case, I'm going to go to my line layer and I'm going to press this little locking button here. And that means that all the pixels that I've drew on this layer are locked. So I can't draw anything new on this layer. Whatever I draw will only appear on the surface that is already drawn in. In this case, I can very easily change the colors of the lines that I have there. So I can just take a red one, draw over it, and then I can take uh, the gradient tool and just give it a nice gradient, giving it a, a, a nice darker uh, red. So sort of having a gradient within the lines. This is another property. There's, there's many other properties of the layers, but I think that goes one extra step. So let's, let's just stick with this for the basic tutorial. 
Okay, moving on, I'm just going to speed this up a little bit more because this is Sketchbook Pro and it's pretty much the same as Photoshop. Obviously, you create the layers a little bit differently, but you, I, I did the same thing. I created the top layer, I created a middle layer with the color in it, I locked it with the, there's, there's the same uh, little lock, so where you can lock the pixels on this layer. So I rendered it nicely and then finally I created a new layer which uh, is going to be the shadows layer and I just painted in a quick shadow. And then finally to round all of this up we switch over to Procreate just to show you that it's actually the same thing as well. And remember here you can also lock the layer, in this case it's called Alpha Lock but it does the same thing, it locks the pixels. So I hope I know that uh, for most of you guys this is already known stuff, but I feel that there were plenty of people uh, because a couple of them asked me if I could help them with layers. So I hope this helps you in learning and getting better in the digital way of painting because I feel that these are the building blocks on which you can really learn digital painting and really use all the tricks and almost the infinite number of things you can do with digital art. So this was today's video, a little bit on the simple side, but I still hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you like this and you would like to see more content like this, please hit that like button and also maybe consider subscribing. You can also follow my Instagram for more regular updates. So that was it folks, wish you all a great week and see you guys next time, bye bye!